Hello, my name is Allison Ward. I'm an assistant professor of cardiothoracic surgery at Emory University, and today I'm going to be talking about fast tracking in the cabbage patient. What is fast tracking? It's a multidisciplinary approach to the care of the cardiac surgery patient. It incorporates modifications in anesthetic management, operative management, and postoperative management to facilitate sh shorter postoperative courses. It's not a new concept, and it has been around for over 20 years. So why do we care about fast tracking? Does it make a difference? Multiple studies have shown that fast tracking reduces the ICU and hospital lengths of stay, can improve patient outcomes, and can reduce hospital costs. Of course, there are concerns that moving a patient too quickly postoperatively could result in complications. So what if we find a balance between fast tracking and minimizing complications to develop a fast track protocol that's optimal for our cabbage patients. In this eight and eight, I will review the ERAS and fast track data, provide some tips for fast tracking, and then finish with a case presentation. Enhanced recovery after surgery, or ERAS, is a bundled approach to perioperative care. ERAS aim is to return patients to their normal functional status as soon as possible. In the 2019 ERAS guidelines, there's a level one indication for goal-directed fluid therapy, modimodal pain management, and rapid extubation within six hours of surgery. In the updated 2024 consensus statement, there's a focus on reducing pulmonary artery catheters, Again, rapid extubation within six hours of surgery and or OR extubation in select patients, early postoperative ambulation, and again, multimodal pain management. In this example of fast tracking, the goal is for a three-day hospital length of stay. And we can see that the protocol starts in the preoperative period and transitions intraoperatively to the ICU and postoperatively. In 46 patients undergoing this protocol, they were able to discharge patients home by hospital day length, by hospital day three. The 10 central measures that they looked at, they were able to achieve success in over 70% in six of them. So overall, this fast track protocol demonstrated that it was safe with no increased mortality or morbidity in patients to be discharged within three days. Alxobark et al. looked at 250 patients who underwent cardiac surgery. They were able to extubate 100% in the operating room with no, with no reintubations. They had a reasonable transfusion rate and a low mortality rate. Moon et al. randomized 600 cardiac surgery patients to a fast track or non-fast track protocol. And their in-hospital mortality did not differ. Well, the fast track group had reduced major complications and reduced length of stay. And then what they found was that the non-fast track group was an independent predictor of morbidity in these patients. One key component to fast tracking is rapid extubation, whether that's intraoperatively or fast tracking in the ICU. Both are effective and both require close collaboration with anesthesia and our ICU colleagues. On the left, James et al. from NYU transitioned from a largely ICU extubation protocol to an OR extubation protocol. In 2020, you can see 35% were extubated in the OR, and that increased over two years to 83%. They found no difference when they matched the groups. They found no difference in rates of reintubation, reoperation, stroke, renal failure, or mortality. What they did find was that there was a reduction in discharges to facilities and a reduction in readmissions in the OR extubation group. Alternatively, Helwani et al. show a three-hour ICU extubation protocol. Using this multidisciplinary protocol, they were able to reduce the, mean, the median um, time to extubation by 44%. 
50% of their patients were able to be extubated within three hours in this group compared to prior to this protocol initiation, and only one patient required reintubation. One of the important things to consider when developing fast tracking in the cabbage patient is the importance of the team. Being able to accomplish fast tracking requires buy-in from your colleagues. Here are some of the specialties that surgeons can collaborate with in order to have both an effective and successful fast track program. These include the heart team, anesthesiology, critical care, nursing, advanced practice providers, pharmacy, dietitian, and PTOT. Beyond rapid extubation, there's a few other ICU considerations to, to facilitate fast tracking. Pictured here is a patient on post-op day one after a cabbage mitral with Impella 5.5 support. And you can see he's already sitting in a chair, ready to ambulate with physical therapy, despite being on a large amount of vasoactive drips. But in our more straightforward isolated cabbage patient, it's still important to immobilize the patients early. They should be extubated in the operating room or within six hours in the ICU, and after extubation, be mobilized to the chair and ambulated shortly thereafter. Consider not using a PA catheter and removing lines when patients are off vasoactive medications. Can consider um, not using pacing wires or using pacing wires and removing them on post-op day one if no pacing is required. And for chest tubes, early removal allows for early mobilization of the patient, often after they have mobilized on post-op day one. Additionally, transitioning from an insulin drip to a short and long acting insulin regimen once the patient is taking PO on day one is important to fast track the patient in addition to increasing or advancing their diet to a cardiac diet. AFib prophylaxis is important. Starting a beta blocker and possibly amiodarone can help with that. Finally, in this real world example, this is a 59 year old gentleman with a history of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, obesity, and an end STEMI. He had an ejection fraction of 50%, no valve disease, and triple vessel disease. In the operating room, he received a central line, but no SWAN, TEE. He was kept normothermic, and opioids were minimized. He underwent a cabbage times theory with a radial to his OM and a vein to the PDA, limit LED, and sternal plating for his obesity. Postoperatively, he was extubated in the intensive care unit two hours post-op. He was out of bed to a chair and ambulating within four hours postoperatively. He was given goal-directed fluid therapy overnight, and by the morning of post-op day one, he was D-lined prior to morning rounds and chest tubes were removed. Goal-directed medical therapy was started and he was transitioned to the floor on post-op day one. Post-op day two, he continued mobilizing and we started diuresis and he was discharged home on post-op day number three with close outpatient follow-up. In summary, fast tracking of the cabbage patient is not only possible, but it provides good outcomes for patients with limited risk. Working with multidisciplinary protocols is essential to a successful program. Thank you.